Hey guys, been kind of busy around here the last few weeks, uh, trying to get a lot of other things done so I can get caught up and uh, get to working on the other greenhouse. But uh, what I'm going to do right now is show you all what's been going on right here in the first one. First thing you notice, looks like I might make a mater or two, or three or four or five. They've done pretty good. I had a little problem with these white buckets. Uh, I would not recommend anybody use these buckets uh, from the source that I got them from. From the feed store that had boron and uh, magnesium powder in it. Uh, that stuff was still in the sidewalls of the plastic and really upset the growth of the plants. Took me a while to uh, figure out exactly what the cause of it was and uh, adjust the nutrient levels a little bit but they have responded uh, quite nicely just walking down through here these are the big beefs right here I lost uh, probably three or four dozen early on uh, the blossom rot had uh, magnesium deficiencies uh, that boron really messed up how the plants could uptake the, uh, the nutrients but I think I pretty much got it straightened out now this row was the indeterminate Rutgers and they really really struggled I think the difference was the first buckets that I had had been sitting out for a while I believe they were from last year had been rained on and leached out right much so the uh, the boron wasn't so bad in those but this second row I believe these buckets came from this year's crop and it was pretty strong in there been taking a while to to get things adjusted the new growth is coming out looks real good still got tomatoes on there that's a big old cluster of maters right there. On this side right here, on the uh, south, uh, south face of the wall, is determinate Rutgers, and I've had no problem with them whatsoever in the grow bags. No blossom rot, no nutrient deficiencies, nothing funky going on with the leaves. So that was the sign that told me there was something wrong uh, inside the buckets when everything has the same soil mix or pretty close to it, and then you notice something wrong with your leaves. There's got to be uh, there's got to be a reason. These right here are Heinz 1439s. Had no problem whatsoever with them as well. Uh, nice healthy plants. All kinds of tomatoes coming on in there, looking real good. Right here we got my second run of cucumbers. The first ones reached the top of the greenhouse and uh, got off to a bad start in 105 degree temperatures in here and so uh, I made what I could off of them and I uh, already got the next ones going and you just look at the size of the leaves on that thing right there that is that's nice those are some real healthy plants the first little cucumbers coming on right here would have been some more at the bottom but I've been breaking them off uh, up to about the fifth uh, leaf crotch right here and let the plant go ahead and develop a big enough root system so hopefully it can it can handle uh, the fruit production I made an adjustment to my soil mixture as well on these last cucumbers. I went ahead and bought some uh, vermiculite when I was at the feed store. Got this four cubic foot bag right here for $15 and change. I think $15.79, something like that. And what I was doing, instead of putting the same amount of perlite, what I did was split the perlite in half and take the other half of that and put uh, vermiculite in there. I think it has a little better... Uh, moisture holding properties and the perlite does to keep the soil from drying out quite as fast keep the water from running right through it and we'll see how this goes so we'll cut back on the uh, perlite a little bit and uh, add some vermiculite to the soil mix I got a lot of questions about my moringa trees that I started way back when and I had made the comment that I really didn't do anything with them uh, pretty much neglected them uh, they were just so slow growing. I'm not a tree grower. Uh, maybe I don't have enough patience for it. Certainly not going to be able to grow a pineapple tree. That kind of deal. But this is three of them. I, uh, I went ahead and topped three other ones and just took all the leaves off and uh, put them in a container. Let them dry out and then I'll just mash them up and sprinkle them in something one day. This was the tallest one right here. He's, uh, well mine's the bag, about five and a half foot. And you see how he's all bushed out down here. So what I'm going to do is just cut that, make them bush out down there, and I probably should have done it with these over here, but I just never got around to it. This one right here, 
it's flowering uh, same thing big old flower cluster up here I don't know much about these things so I'm gonna just uh, leave them in the greenhouse for the winter and see how they do right in here is some Parthenon squash that I planted y'all saw me grow this outside just testing it this year I made a little video on it it doesn't require uh, pollination it's parthenocarpic so I don't have to worry about matching up males and females and I tested it outside to make sure that it was true and it worked out pretty well looking down on the inside of it it's called a squash but to me it's a zucchini it's a little small green zucchini best to eat it I think about six eight inches or something like that and what I did I put them in the grow bags and got them going and when they were nice and healthy I knew uh, I wasn't going to lose any plant I went ahead and dug, dug me a hole and set this bag down in it it's only two or three inches above the level of the ground where I kind of built it up so when this thing grows it can just fall over and keep on going right here are some of my pepper plants the uh, Camelot bell peppers and Sunbrights Sunbrights makes the big orange yellowish looking one last time I told y'all about these things I said they were ready to take off well they took off this is one of the Camelots right here already got peppers coming down in there looking down in the bag I'm showing a transplant date of September 13th so these things have been in the bag about six weeks give or take since I transplanted them and already making fruit I can't complain about that at all looking at the rest of them little peppers coming on all kinds of blossoms down in there and one of the things that I noticed is a different growth habit these are some brights right here and you see how how quick they bush out and bunch out as opposed to this camelot right here that wants to have a more vertical stem and then get up here when it gets about 12 inches tall then it forks out and it's made one to made three nice uh, branches there I prefer to go ahead and let the plants grow like this and never have to worry about pruning them after they get up six foot tall we'll think about pruning them then looking at the next greenhouse about the only thing I've done since last time I finished getting the rest of the hoops up and I'm working on a center support system right now so that the roof can carry the weight of uh, all the tomatoes and cucumbers that I want to put in here I didn't do much for a fall crop this year between the hurricanes the rain and just being busy I really didn't plant anything much anyway but I did plant some broadleaf mustard buddy Ralph down in Florida sent me the seeds for this make some beautiful plants here quick big old tender leaves that's some good stuff right there and just a quick look at some of the broccoli this is Pac-Man you see the little shoots already coming out the side just as soon as I cut this big uh, bunch off I forget what they call it we we'll cut that off them little small ones come on out and make some more broccoli but I got I don't know probably 50 75 plants down here this good looking stuff and we did a few cabbage about a dozen or so not a whole lot they're not heading up yet gonna be a little while on them the only thing I did pretty much was stick them in the ground down here gave them a little bit of fertilizer sprayed them for worms a couple of times with some dipel and let them go well that's gonna do it for today as you can see everything in here is coming along nice the bait is doing good I had the one little slip up with these white buckets right here with the boron and the manganese residue still inside of them. So we're working through that. That's a mistake that I won't make again. Uh, the cucumbers, zucchini, squash over there, peppers, even my little moringo over there is trying to do something. So things coming along. Uh, another another couple weeks should be ready to start eating some of these tomatoes right here. And um, I can't tell y'all how enjoyable this is to be able to come out to a greenhouse and see the stuff growing and knowing it's getting colder and colder every day and it doesn't matter um, as long as you have a source of heat where you can bring the temperatures up uh, greenhouse growing is fantastic uh, and when you're in a situation when you got to bring the heat down meaning you need some air conditioning or something that's a little bit more tricky which is why I feel like growing into the fall through the winter and spring 
is a much easier growing process than dealing with uh, the summertime heat, humidity, uh, insects, thunderstorms, hailstorms, and that kind of deal. So seeing a lot more people right now putting up little hoop houses, uh, getting things started, little small greenhouses, get, kind of getting their feet wet a little bit, and that's what you need to do. Start small, find out a few things about it, see if you like it, and uh, then go on from there. But uh, I enjoy it. I think it's obvious. It's very productive. And it's just a really cool way to grow vegetables and know what you're growing, know what was put in it. So when you get ready to eat it, there's no if, ands, or buts about no GMO and, you know, whatever pesticide was sprayed on it, whatever uh, that bacteria stuff where you get um, salmonella, that kind of deal. Grow it yourself and you don't have those kind of problems. As always, I appreciate all the support, the uh, the comments, the questions, that kind of deal. Uh, I'm no expert by far at this, still making mistakes, still learning my way. And um, it's good to have somebody else following along and uh, helping me out. Y'all take care.